He might actually be the most derivative one of all. I mean, Christ, the same house. Maybe so. But you forgot the first rule of surviving a stab movie. Never answer the- I'm bored. Wait! And welcome back to Horror Queers. It's video. We're talking about movies. I'm excited to close out this year, Trace. <laughs> Me too. Uh, yes, everyone, we were discussing the smaller horror films that are coming out in December that we are either looking forward to or intrigued by. So actually, is there a big horror film coming out this month? Uh, so here's the thing, folks. We're recording this relatively early because we've got Christmas shopping and other things to do for the holiday mm -hmm. season. So it's possible that there's a big announcement and we've missed it or something. But yeah, <laughs> there's mostly like streaming kind of like elevated horror bullshit options that yeah. you know maybe you'll see on the patreon this month but nothing huge is jumping out yeah 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 I mean, honestly what we have here are a lot of films that have done their festival circuit and they're finally getting a release yes and a couple of good options especially compared to november i yeah i think there were more seeming winners here than we had in november <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so why don't you start us off yeah, so um, I will start off with A Creature Was Stirring, and this will be on VOD December 8th. Uh, in this movie, Faith keeps her daughter on a regiment of experimental drugs to fend off a mysterious, terrifying affliction. When two burglars try to rob their home on Christmas, they stumble upon their long-kept family secret with monstrous consequences. Ooh. I really am looking forward to this one, if only because of the cast. I mean, yeah. we have... Chrissy Metz from uh, This Is Us. We've got Connor Paolo from OG Gossip Girl. We've got Scout Taylor Compton from the Halloween movies. And, mm -hmm. oh, Annalise Basso, who's from like Oculus and some of the early Mike Flanagan projects. Um, right. I feel like we're in for a creature feature based on that log line. Yes. Um, the trailer, it's, it's, it shows a lot. Honestly, what struck me the most here was the, uh, the lighting. It looks mm -hmm. very festive. Like this is a yeah. Christmas movie through and through, but like, with what looks to be like a really intense performance from Chrissy Metz. Yes, intense performances. This is basically Don't Breathe with a creature because it's obviously the daughter who is going to like transform and also yeah. practical effects. This looks like we have some kind of creature design person in a suit and I'm here for it. I was very surprised by this. Because I, I would confess, you know, sometimes when you, when you get one of those press emails for a movie, you're kind of like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I almost skipped this trailer, and I'm glad I did not. Okay. Hey, hey, there we go. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's up for you? Okay, so mine is also seasonally appropriate. Ooh. My first pick is Santa Isn't Real. It's also out on VOD on December 8th. And the logline is, after suffering a brutal attack on Christmas Eve, a young woman, Nikki, struggles to convince her friends that the assailant was none other than old Chris Kringle. When Santa returns to terrorize the group in their remote cabin the next Christmas, Nikki and her friends must overcome disbelief as they fight to stay alive. Mm -hmm. So I'll confess, the trailer is a little bit janky like uh -huh. this could be extremely dodgy but this is basically a slasher film where the villain is bucking santa claus okay kind of but it's also wearing like a mask like a santa yes. claus mask so i was like is it really santa claus like i think it, there's gonna be a reveal i hope so um yeah this the dialogue in this trailer did not um instill confidence in me and so i was kind of mm -hmm. like you know which is like it's santa i was like I kind of wish this was a little bit sillier. Um, it seems to be taking oh, okay. itself quite seriously. Yes. Yeah. I'll be curious to see if there is any comedy in here or if we're trying to play it straight. I think even though this is low budget, though, I was sort of impressed with, mm -hmm. you know, the, the action, the kills that we get glimpses of around the editing. So this is a I'm intrigued, but I'm not 100% sold on it. Yeah. You'll say intrigued, but not optimistic. <laughs> Wow. Okay. What's your uh, next pick? Well, my next one is actually one that both of us have seen. So this yes. is uh, Jen Wexler's The Sacrifice Game, which is going to be hitting Shutter December 8th. And uh, the logline for this, in the 1970s, because this is a period piece, mm -hmm. boarding school students Samantha and Clara stay behind during Christmas break. Things take a deadly turn when a murderous gang arrives at their doorstep intent on summoning a demon. And 
I'll be the first to say uh, I I was wary about this one, if only because I wasn't a huge fan of Jen Wexler's last film, The Ranger. Um, right. This was a huge step up for me. Like, it's not, I wasn't blown away by it, but I had a lot of fun with it. And okay. that's not something I could say about The Ranger. Yeah, I think that there were a lot of things getting ironed out in The Ranger, which are more successful here. This does yeah. feel... Yeah, you're right. It's a step up in terms of quality. I think even like the scope of filmmaking, even though yeah. The Ranger was an, an almost entirely outdoor shot film, this one has bigger set pieces. The cast is a little bit bigger. There's like more special effects and that kind of stuff. I like this. I don't love it. Yeah. But I do want to say that the child performance, because of course it's set at this girl's boarding school. So there's like these these teenagers slash adults who attack it to perform the ritual looking for people to sacrifice. And there's like a couple of lead teenage girls. Yeah. And one of the girls is exceedingly good. I was like, this is a fantastic child performance. I'm so I agree with you. Um, I'm gonna let you know that we are not like not everyone agrees with us. Like a friend of the show, oh. Jenny Null, thinks that one of these actresses is not good. And okay. it killed the movie for her. So I know that's like outside baseball. I know. I really Ooh. liked it though. I will say Mina Masood plays one of the villains here um, from yes. Guy Ritchie's Aladdin film. And I think he's doing well with what he's given. But what he's given is a very one note villain that has no levels whatsoever. He's also kind of wacky. Like he loses his mind as the film progresses and becomes mm -hmm. more quote unquote dangerous. And it's interesting because he's obviously incredibly hot and he like takes off his shirt for a large portion of the film so even when his performance wasn't doing it for me at least there was something very nice to look at but I I actually didn't mind him because in some ways I felt like he was the one who was chewing the scenery a little bit more yeah I just wish he because I it's hard to go into that going into spoilers but mm -hmm. I I wish he had more like levels to play with sure yeah one note is right yeah Okay, so my next one is The Portrait, also out on VOD on December 8th. In case you haven't guessed, folks, December 8th is the date we've chosen to release yeah. all the movies. <laughs> so in this one, in the wake of her husband's devastating accident, a devoted wife becomes consumed by a mysterious portrait that resembles him in his happier days. Shades of Oscar Wilde. So, <laughs> however, as her obsession intensifies, the painting starts to unleash terror upon her life leading her to question whether it is possessed by a malevolent force or if she is losing her sanity. It's probably the malevolent force and not her sanity, but this is one of those sort of like, not quite period, not quite gothic, very like spooky shit happening in a big house kind of movies. And I dug it. Yeah, I, I, I thought I, I liked the vibe of this trailer. I mean, it doesn't hurt that we have Ryan Quantin and Virginia Madsen in this movie. Yes. I mean, folks, I'm going to admit it. I fucking love Virginia Madsen. Mm -hmm. And she is in a lot of not good movies. So I don't. OK, I was I, no shade to Virginia Madsen. I was watching this. and I was like, what happened to her? career like did people just stop casting her in things i don't i don't know it's it's mm, it, it is very frustrating because yeah she's in a couple of really good things every once in a while but then she it's like oh i gotta pay the bill so i'm gonna do a bunch of schlocky horror film because people remember me from Candyman, which yeah. is super unfortunate yeah yeah so i i mean nevertheless though i i i liked the vibe of this i didn't get a t like that log line i didn't even know if i really got that from the trailer no, <laughs> no you were like there's a painting that looks like her dead husband yes <laughs> and ryan quantum might be a ghost who likes to abuse women so like yeah. there you go um mm -hmm. yeah intrigued by this uh it's only <laughs> for the cast and i like the look of the trailer okay yeah uh, so my final one is Everyone Will Burn, which is actually hitting VOD uh, December 4th. So before December 8th. <laughs> Way to put them chronologically, sir. <laughs> I know. Uh, this follows Maria Jose, an outlier in her small Spanish town, who is grieving after her young son's suicide. Uh, as she teeters on the brink of suicide herself, she encounters a mysterious young girl, newcomer Sofia Garcia, caked in dirt. And um, it is quickly revealed that the girl has telekinetic powers and might be the harbinger of the apocalyptic prophecy that exists within town legend. And oh. I know. <laughs> so uh, again, a lot of information in this log line because that's the thing where it's like, oh yeah, this girl has dwarfism, which also is what her son was afflicted with. And so it's like, oh. there's a connection there. Um, I, again, really liked the vibe of this trailer. This looked very like deep, dark, and heavy. Um, yeah. 
I don't know what the budget is, but like it looks like this is not it's gonna be a nihilistic film, I feel like. Oh yeah, yeah. It fully looks like we're killing a bunch of kids. Uh yeah. it's amusing, <laughs> right? Like we're covering when evil lurks on the Patreon this month as a bit of a like catch up bonus episode. And I was yeah. like, hello, this looks like it would be a great double feature of kids being horribly murdered. Man, but you know, we're getting like backlash on that, that weed, like the genre in general. Oh. I feel like there's like a new trend going on social media where it's like, oh, all these people want to see kids get killed. That's sick. And I was like, I don't know. It's a movie. So wait, <laughs> we're not allowed to see people fuck anymore and we're not allowed we're to, not allowed kids. to see kids like, die. Why yeah. am I going to the theaters anymore? It's Puritans. Like we're, we're just going back into Puritanical beliefs. It's wild <laughs> to me. But nevertheless, <laughs> um, I, I think this looks really good. It's a Draft yes. House Selects film too. So it's actually doing like a limited engagement some Alamo Draft Houses like on the coast. Um, oh, okay. But, um, you know, that, that that that's a seal of approval for me. So I, I'm very much looking forward to this. Yeah, the look of this trailer is really good. Like, I got excited by this trailer immediately upon watching it. And I was like, yeah, I'm absolutely going to check this out. Like, yeah. some of these we pick up things just because we're trying to, like, have a couple of options. Yeah. This one was one where I was like, oh, no, I will be hitting play on this movie. Well, what I will also be hitting play on is your final selection. Okay, so this is interesting. Yeah. I never heard of this until I was looking for options. And then it was like, what is this? Let me hit play. So this is Lord of Misrule, December 8th, VOD. Yeah. <laughs> and it follows Rebecca Holland, who has recently taken over the parish church. So a lot of religious horror this year as well. Have you noticed that? Yeah, but this is, I, I'm putting this more in folk horror. Yes, actually, that is good. Accurate. So uh, when her young daughter goes missing at the winter festival, villagers and local police join in the desperate search. However, the closer they edge towards finding the girl, the more secrets emerge from the town's dark past. Soon Rebecca must decide just how much she is willing to sacrifice to rescue her daughter from the grip of evil. This is kind of like, sure, what is going on? Yeah, it sounds a little Wicker Manny is. Yes. Esque. There we go. Um, yeah. But Trace, this is one reason to be excited for this. What's the other reason to be excited for this title? The director is William Brent Bell, who people may know positively or negatively as mm -hmm. the director of both The Boy and Brahms The Boy 2, but also Orphan First Kill. Yes. And I mean, look, this man has had a, a, a career of ups and downs, uh, more downs than ups, but whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say, though, there is so much striking imagery in this trailer that I'm yeah. already hooked. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was the thing that got me is when you said folk horror, I was like, yeah, you know, atmosphere for days. It looks dreary. It almost looks period like a film we would have gotten in the yeah. 70s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's because I, I don't know if this is a town or like a village where it's like, oh, like we're sequestered from the society. But um, this looks highly stylized for him mm -hmm. yeah I just a completely different subgenre to be playing in so that's exciting yeah. yeah i mean it's a little worrisome where it's like oh wow this is out and like i haven't heard a single thing about it but um you know what then that means my expectations will be like here and hopefully it will surpass them there we go there we go <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone well that has been our uh our picks for december uh definitely let us know i mean again as just said we're recording this in advance so it's entirely possible a hundred other movies have been announced since we <laughs> recorded this um so <laughs> let us know what are you looking forward to december and uh until next time we can cross out this mini episode on our most anticipated december horror indeed yes and cross out horror queers on youtube <laughs>